Hey everybody, and welcome back to Jim's Garage. So yeah, I hate Podman. But only because it's made me replace my Docker host. And in this video, I'll be talking through all of the features that Podman has, and why you might want to consider replacing Docker for Podman. And whilst that might sound pretty drastic, it's good to know that the existing config files that I've already shared with you will work with Podman. So the transition is seamless. But before we get too far down that road, don't worry if you are using Docker and continue to use Docker in a home lab, there's nothing wrong with that. And as we all know, there's usually something better around the corner and Podman is pretty much a good example of that. So in this video, I'm gonna talk you through what Podman is and why I think it's better than Docker for certain use cases. I'll show you how to deploy this and we'll spin up a new VM using a VM template which is something I'll cover specifically in another video. And then I'll show you how to deploy some containers using Podman. So hopefully you'll be able to replicate your existing Docker environment in a seamless fashion. So Jim, why have you been advocating the use of Docker and providing all of these Docker Compose files? It's a good question and I'm probably guilty of jumping on the bandwagon. And it wasn't until sort of the past 12 months that I heard about Podman. And by that time, I'd already transitioned from Docker over into Kubernetes. And some of you will know that I've still left one of my Docker hosts up and running, but that's gonna change as of today. Personally, I will be running Podman, but I will still keep doing my videos using Docker Compose because it's far more popular. And as I mentioned, those Docker Compose files will work within Podman. So let's get on to the three reasons why you should consider switching to Podman. So number one, security. By default, Podman runs without a root user. That's different to Docker, albeit from version 19 of Docker, you've been able to run it as a non-root user, but by default, it still operates as root. So what does that mean? Well, it means that when one of your containers is compromised, it basically gets access to the host and can do host-like commands. So it can delete other things, it can read data, and all of the bad stuff that you hear about happens in many of the breaches we see. So by not running as a root user in Podman, it means that once a container is compromised, it can only access data within that container. It cannot perform special tasks on the host. It cannot do, i.e. pseudo commands. And also due to the way that permissions are within Podman, it cannot read data from other containers which is awesome. Podman actually uses user namespaces to run those containers and thus root privileges are never exposed. Number two is auditability. And Podman uses an execute fork model so that all commands are forked and run independently. So you could have multiple users all doing different commands that are auditable. Whereas Docker uses a client server model where all of the executed commands are done centrally. That means Podman has the ability to see specific commands sent from specific users, which makes it simple to diagnose and from a security perspective, invokes the principle of least privilege and gives full auditability of user actions. Number three, that stems from, and the clues in the title, Podman. And this is a bit of a bonus. And it relates to the tooling that comes with Podman, notably in the Podman desktop application, whereby you can generate Kubernetes manifest files from your pod deployments so that you can then replicate this within Kubernetes. So it makes the whole process of moving from Podman into Kubernetes a seamless experience. So before you go ahead and replace Docker with Podman, it's probably worthwhile setting up a sandbox environment first and testing this thing out. So that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do in this video. Normally I would spin up just your regular VM, but in this video, I'm gonna use a VM template. I'll come onto this in another video in detail, but essentially once you've got this up and running, it's as simple as right clicking your template, clicking clone, changing the link clone to a full clone, giving it a name, I'm gonna call it Podman, and then hitting clone. And as you can see here, it's already created that VM and it's even better than that. When I start this VM, and we'll go into the console in a minute, you'll see that the OS is automatically installed using an Ubuntu minimalist cloud image. 
and by default it will automatically go and pull all updates and you'll automatically be using the latest version of Ubuntu. It's amazing. So with that virtual machine cloned and it automatically creates all of the hardware configurations, so CPU, RAM, all of that good stuff, let's hit start and then let's get this thing up and running. And as I said, this is automatically configured and set up ready to deploy and it will go in and pull down all of those updates so we've got a nice up-to-date OS running in the background. And you can see it's automatically pulling those updates now. I'll see you in a minute when it's finished. So now that this is completed, I'm going to log in, reboot the machine, grab the IP address and then connect to it through WinSCP and Putty. Now thankfully the process to install Podman couldn't be simpler. And it's as simple as sudo apt get install podman. So let's run that command now and let's see what comes out the other side. As you remember with Docker, there were a whole host of keychains and things like that that we needed to create. But in this instance, it's just a single command. There are bleeding edge versions of podman that you can choose to install, but I'm not gonna touch on those in this video because I want something that's stable and supported so that there's a better chance of it working. So now that's completed, we're pretty much ready to go. And the great thing about Podman is it follows the same syntax, i.e. the command structure, that you're used to with Docker. So you can see here with this command that I've just run, Podman version. Now, because it doesn't require root permissions, I've been able to run that as the local user. But you can see now that the version is up to date and everything is up and running. So let's go ahead and, I don't know, why don't we install Portainer? So to do that, we first need to enable the socket. And you'll remember this from my Docker video. The socket is how it connects to the underlying Podman socket so that it can query and look at all of the containers that are running on there. So let's run that container and it's created that link. Next, we're gonna need to spin up this container. And I'm doing this as a rootless user, remember. And to do this, we're gonna reuse the same command that we used to spin up Docker. Just note here that we're doing podman run, not a sudo, so this isn't running as a privileged user. And if you look at everything else, similarly, as I said with Docker Compose, it's the same syntax for spinning up podman, but with all of the benefits that come with podman. So it's pretty much a win-win. And now that's pulling the image pretty much in the same way that Docker would do it. And hopefully once that's completed, that's what it says it's done. We should be able to go and reach that now in my browser using the IP address and the port that it's exposed to. Let's see if we can reach it. So now you can see that I've gone to HTTPS, put in the IP address and then the port assigned to it and fingers crossed, we can proceed. And there we go. We now have Portainer running on Podman in a rootless state. That's pretty awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead now and complete the login process and let's see what we can do in Podman. And as you can see, if I click on the home tab, you can now see the local environment running. There's one container, which is Portainer, and this looks and behaves exactly like you would see on Docker, but with all of the benefits I previously mentioned. So let's go and spin up another container and see just how far we can push this and how seamlessly this is gonna work with our existing configuration files. For that, I'm simply gonna go and clone my GitHub repository and I'm just gonna spin up a couple of random containers. So now I've got those Docker Compose files copied over to my new Podman VM. Let's have some fun. But before we do that, there is one thing we need to do. And I mentioned that it supports Docker and Compose files. That's right, it does. But we need to quickly install a plugin first so that it can understand the context of a Docker Compose file. Thankfully, that's really straightforward and it's just a simple single command. So to install Podman Compose, we need to run the following script, which is actually a Python script from the official Podman repository. And once it's pulled this down and installed it, we're then gonna need to change the permissions so that we can execute it. That will then enable us to run the podman-compose command to use our existing Docker Compose files. And that's as simple as running a chmod to modify those permissions and make it executable. And if I hit return, that's now done. So fingers crossed, we should now be able to go and run an old style Docker Compose, but in this case, a Podman Compose, and an up-d to deploy one of our existing containers. Let me try that now. 
Before we're able to get the composer from running, however, there is one more dependency we need to install, and that's Python 3 env. We need this as a dependency to run Docker Compose files. So once that's completed, we should now be able to go and execute the podman compose up command. Now, because most of my Docker Compose files are put onto that proxy network so that we can have SSL encryption and nice padlock symbols in our address bars, we need to create that network first in Podman. And again, the syntax is straightforward. Podman, network, create, and then I'm going to call it proxy. Now that that's created, we should be able to go and deploy this Jellyfin compose file. Now one final thing before you get this working and these are just little teething issues with transferring from one to the other. You're going to need to go into the compose file and just edit the image to include docker.io because by default it doesn't go to the docker hub to pull that image. So add in docker.io, hit save and then you should be able to go and deploy this with the podman compose up. But unfortunately, there's a bug, so we can't spin this up just yet. And the issue is related to the version of the CNI that's running, which controls the networks for this container and Podman in general. So to remedy that, we need to nano into the config file for the network we created. And here you can see it's in home, ubuntu, dot config, CNI, netd, and then proxy, that's the name of the network, dot conf list. And if I go into there, on yours, when this is first created, you'll see that this is version 1.0.0. What you need to change it to is 0.4.0, which I believe was the old working version. So change that and hit save. And then you should be ready to go. So let's do a podman compose up dash D. And when we hit return, it's going to go away. It's going to pull that. Hopefully we should get this all up and running. So now that that's up and running, let's go and see if we can connect to it. Hey, over in my browser, and I can refresh this just to show you, we're into now the configuration wizard for Jellyfin. So now we have Jellyfin up and running in Podman, and it's looking and behaving just like you would expect it to in Docker. So let's go ahead and spin up something else. I don't know, let's choose Dashi and see if we get the same result. So again, we're going to do a podman compose up dash D. Just remember if you haven't already that you will need to edit it to include that docker.io then slash the image name because by default it doesn't look in the docker hub. So now that this is getting towards completion, let's have a look in the browser and fingers crossed we should be able to reach that dashy dashboard. So let's check in the browser. I've bound this to port 4000. Yeah, and there we go. We've got Dashi up and running now and everything looks good. So hopefully that's shown you how quickly you can get things up and running with your existing config files and you only need to make a few minor tweaks. So hopefully that was a quick and useful overview of Podman. And now you have the tools necessary to go and migrate from Docker to Podman if you wish to. Like I say, Docker is probably okay for a home lab environment and the fact that you can do a similar setup to Podman once you hit version 19 is something to bear in mind. It's just going to require you to go back and change some of your existing setup. The added ability to use your existing Docker Compose files, albeit with some annoying minor tweaks at the moment, but hopefully those bugs get resolved, is also another win that should help you migrate frictionlessly. Just bear in mind that you don't have to use Docker Compose or Podman Compose as I showed with the Portainer deployment. You can still use the old school Docker Run, in this case the Podman, and it will be up and running just as you would expect. But anyway, thanks for watching guys. Do let me know below if this is something that you're going to use and I'll see you on the next video. Please like, comment and subscribe. Take care everybody.